Hello, and welcome to the Moncast, where we compare Pokemon and Digimon. I'm Stevie, and as usual, I'm joined by Chisai236. Hi, I am tired, because I went to bed at 5am, and get a good sleep, kids. This is life lessons from Chisai. Yes. <laughs> sleep. If you're listening to this at a dumb time, don't. Listen to this first, but then go to sleep. No, go to sleep. Put us on pause. Oh, I'll just listen twice, actually. Why not? Yeah, there we go. Listen to it twice. Just go to sleep to the sounds of our voices. Yes, the wonderfully calming sounds of us screaming about Digimon and Pokemon episodes when they're dumb. Yes, exactly. And the current score is 1514 to Pokemon. This time we're discussing the 30th episodes, Tricks of the Trade, and Ultimate Anti-Hero. Or Anti-Hero? anti anti -hero? Anti, anti, anti. I think it's supposed to be anti, because, like, anti is something else, but I think most people say anti anyway. Mm, it doesn't matter. I prefer anti-hero, because it's easier to say. And disclaimer, uh, we recommend watching the episodes before you listen, if you want to have any idea what we're going on about. Okay, cool. So let's start off with Tricks of the Trade. This episode is the one where Jesse gets a Wobbuffet. I, I didn't remember how Wobbuffet got introduced, but this is like, what? <laughs> it's just like, it's just like, oh, he's from a nowhere town in Nowheresburg. And it was just from some weird random trainer named Benny. And Licky Tongue just got traded off to some random trainer named Benny. Like, what? <laughs> I'm sad Lucky Tongue had to go, but I'm glad that Wobbuffet's joined. Ash and them are idiots. Like, how could they not... Oh my god, they're so dumb. Because cause they look at Lucky Tongue and they're like, Oh, that's cool. You got a Lucky Tongue. And, and Benny's like, Yeah, some girl with glasses and long hair traded with me, but I think she left already. And they just saw Jesse with Wobbuffet. So they couldn't put two and two together of... Oh, Jesse and Benny traded. Of course they couldn't, because Jesse doesn't wear glasses. <laughs> they just <laughs> randomly were like, oh, wow, Team Rocket's got a Wobbuffet. Oh, wow, Benny's got a lick tongue now. That's cool. <laughs> oh, it's so random. And in this whole episode, it doesn't make any sense, because the whole thing is about, it's supposed to be like a swap meet kind of festival thing, where... Everyone brings Pokemon that they trained, and then they trade them for other Pokemon that they want, so they can train. It's basically so you can train, like, different kinds of Pokemon. You just trade with other people for different Pokemon, which is cool. But the whole, like, plot of this is, like, Ash and them helping Benny trade his Wobbuffet away, because no one wants Wobbuffet. And I am calling bullcrap on that, because... Wobbuffet is rare. Someone would want Wobbuffet just for the rarity's sake, at least. Like, there'd be, like, a collector or someone who would just be like, Oh my god, a Wobbuffet! I want a Wobbuffet! I'll trade you whatever for it. Someone almost took Wobbuffet and then went for a Hoot Hoot instead, for some reason. Right, which a Hoot Hoot does not compare to a Wobbuffet. A Hoot Hoot is a Hoot Hoot. It's Pidgey at night. It's only slightly rarer because you have to be out at night. That's it. <laughs> Just anyone with bedtimes will never catch a hoot hoot. <laughs> yeah, you'll never get a hoot hoot because you have to go to bed at a reasonable hour. I mean, if I was there, I would have gone straight Wobbuffet. Like, I've never like seen this episode before or known how Jesse got a Wobbuffet, but I've seen plenty of episodes with Wobbuffet in, and like, he is a quintessential part of Team Rocket for me. I'm, I'm really happy that he's finally around because he's just like iconic Team Rocket. Yeah, I, and the thing is, I forgot that Wobbuffet came in this early. I thought Wobbuffet was introduced in Hoenn because that's what I remember Wobbuffet from. And I and that makes sense because I always forget Wobbuffet is a Johto Pokemon, not a Hoenn Pokemon. Because why not is a Hoenn Pokemon, but Wobbuffet isn't. That is so weird. Like, they made the big one and then just went and made a little one. Why did they do that? Why did they make baby Pokemon? They made, like, a whole troop of them. And then, and then Hoenn was like, uh, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll add one. Sure. <laughs> we'll add one. Why not? Get it? Why not? Get it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got it. 
Oh, but seriously, I love Wobba Fett so much. Like, he just goes, Wab. <laughs> That's Wab-a-fet. nice. Wobba Fett. Wab. I love Wobba Fett in general. Like, just the Pokemon in general is great. It's just the weirdest little, like, thing that exists. Wobba Fett also has my favorite gender difference because it's just female Wobba Fett have lipstick. <laughs> I know. It's the weirdest thing. Jesse was not best pleased, though. So. She kind of she kind of warmed up to him towards the end when Counter started working. It's just Wobbuffet can't attack, so you have to wait for someone else to attack. Like, it's actually what the move's called. Is it just called Counter? I think Counter is only supposed to be for physical moves, though. I, there's I forget what the other uh, Magic Coat is supposed to be for special moves. So you have to like guess which one the opponent's going to use and use the right move. Um, but yeah, I think that and uh, Destiny Bond are the only moves Wobbuffet learns. It learns Destiny Bond. That's interesting. Yeah, so that when the opponent hits it, it just passes out. <laughs> yeah, it has a really, really short move set because it's just oh, and safeguard. It's had like the same move set for the past five generations. Yeah, because it's just supposed to be this like countering Pokemon. It's not supposed to be able to attack, which is weird, but also kind of cool. It's like a bigger, bluer magic up. Well, I mean, Wobbuffet actually... Well, I guess Wobbuffet's stats are horrible. Never mind. Except for its HPs. Yeah, it learns Counter, Mirror Coat, Safeguard, and Destiny Bond at level 1. And then that's it. It learns no moves by breeding. This is helpful. It can learn Splash, Charm, and Encore through Why Not, and that's it. <laughs> I can see now why serious trainers wouldn't care about getting a Wobbuffet then. If it's entirely useless in battle. I mean, you could use it, especially in the anime where it's like, nothing really matters. Like, in the games, it's kind of hard to use. But in the anime, it's like, you know, oh, it just keeps reflecting all of your attacks. So it's actually pretty good. You need to breed it holding the lax incense to get why not. Interesting. Uh-huh. There's, Hoenn was big on the incense. There's lots of incense. Why not just loses its hourglass figure to become Wobba Fett and gains an eyeball on his tail? Yes. <laughs> his tail has eyes? I didn't know that. Yeah, the tail is supposed to be the actual body. That's like a theory of it. The The body is just a, the blue body is just a dummy. It talks about how it always protects its tail. It always hides its tail. The tail is the most important thing to it. So people have like theorized that the tail is probably the actual Pokemon and the body, the blue body is actually just like a training dummy. It's just the thing to take all the hits. I guess that does line up with its moveset then. Of just deflecting everything. I've just found this one. It says, if two or more Wobbuffet meet, they will turn competitive and try to outdo each other's endurance. However, they may try to see which one can endure the longest without food. Trainers need to beware of this habit. Jesus, don't let your Wobbuffet starve. Oh, the Alpha Sapphire one's just like, Wobbuffet does nothing but endure attacks. It won't attack on its own. However, it won't endure an attack on its tail. When that happens, the Pokemon will try to take the foe with it using Destiny Bond. Yeah. So Destiny Bond isn't, like, actually useful. It's only there as a last-ditch effort to get revenge. Oh yeah, that's how the attack works. It's supposed to be, if you faint on that turn, then the opponent goes down too. Wow. Basically... Destiny Bond is there for when it's bitter. When anyone's bitter, just Destiny Bond. <laughs> Screw you, I didn't want to play with you anyway, Destiny Bond. <laughs> now we both lose. Yeah, right, exactly. Now we both lose. <laughs> I think we've covered Wobbo better enough. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I want to talk more about trading. I don't like trading in the show. It's really weird. Like, a lot of the show comes across as trying to big up this bond between the trainer and the Pokemon. And then trading comes along is just like, hey, get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of weird. I see it as like a parent trying to swap the children with someone else's children. <laughs> it's just not right. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, see, it doesn't really work. So I was thinking of it, if you think about it in terms of a pet, then it's kind of like you're trying to find a good home, but you're also getting something else in return. So that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. Trading doesn't work. Like, it's hard to value the Pokemon and then also just say, okay, but I want to get a different one, so bye. Like, let's say people put ads out. Like those NPCs in the game. Like, I want this Pokemon for a Ralt. Then you'd be like, I'm going to go get that Pokemon so I can get Ralts. You probably don't have a, a very strong bond with the thing you're trading away, but it gets you something that, you know, you want, maybe? I don't know. Like, it's fine that it's a mechanic, because people would trade their Pokemon away. 
But, yeah, I mean, if you're more attached to your Pokemon, then you wouldn't trade them. Yeah, like, I just don't get this whole episode, really. Like, the whole idea of it is people spend ages investing time in the Pokemon so they can get rid of it for a different one. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of dog shows. They kind of, like, raise this Pokemon and they make it look all nice and tough, and then they're like, okay, do you want my Pokemon? It's like, uh, sure. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I why not? She's like, no, it's Wobbuffet. <laughs> no, it's Wobbuffet. I feel sad for Lickitung, because I did like Lickitung. Yeah, Lickitung was good. Oh, I didn't mention my favorite part of this episode, which is that Team Rocket, at one point, is, like, taking a break. And so, um, James has, like, a hose, and he's, like, watering Victory Bell, and he's like, just remember how well I take care of you the next time you decide to bite the head that waters you. And Jessie is, like, washing up her face and, like, kind of just cleaning up. And then after she's done, Licky Tongue immediately licks her. <laughs> and she gets upset. She starts, like, shaking Licky Tongue, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And in the background, you can see Victory Bell biting James. <laughs> it's like, you guys aren't great at this. Arbok and Weezing are the only obedient ones. Right. Yeah. Like, they've actually evolved under the, the training. Mm -hmm. So did Victory Bell, I think. Because I think, yeah, James just went, oh, it's my Weeping Bell, one episode, and then he had a Weeping Bell <laughs> out of nowhere. But still, the trend with Team Rocket is their Pokemon don't take odd as well. Nah. Except for Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet did. He's just not very useful. <laughs> Which is in fitting with Team Rocket's whole shtick, is they're not very good. <laughs> You're right, they're not at all. <laughs> I love how even... Even on Bulbapedia, it's just like, yeah, Victory Bell shows its affection by biting James's head. That's that's how affection works. You eat the ones you love. If you haven't eaten the person you love, you don't love them enough. Speaking of, of hating trading, Ash sends his hair across back to Professor Oak and gets a Tauros. Yes. And then wins with the Tauros as well at this bullfighting thing. That which is just bull. Like, literal bowl. Like, yeah, it's just bullfighting. Except the, the bowls are fighting. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure, but, like, Ash has never trained Taurus, right? Nope. Of course. So, and then he wins, like, a defending champion. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> I love how this anime is just like, Ash must win everything except the leagues. Everything but the leagues. He has plot armor all the way up until the actual like, like, Pokemon League, and then he loses. And it's like, why? Well, I still hate Ash. Just like, Heracross has been one of my favorite Pokemon he's caught so far. Especially this whole season. Heracross has been really good. A fun Pokemon. They're cool. They, they eat honey. It's nice. They're good Pokemon. And then Ash is like, wait! I, I need a cow. Just send me a cow. I need a cow buffalo thing. I need this cow that I've never trained to win instantly. I mean, to be fair, it was like a thing for Taurus specifically, but still, it's like, you got Heracross back, right? <laughs> I don't think he did. I think he's just going to carry on with this, this cow. <laughs> That's all it is. It's a cow. Move over, Heracross. Taurus is here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That, that gets a thumbs up. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. But yeah, now he has a Tauros on his team. Um, an entirely untrained Tauros. It's also one of literally dozens of other Tauros he has named Tauros. Because <laughs> he doesn't nickname any of them. You could also argue that all of his Pokemon are completely untrained. And Pikachu trained himself, so that doesn't count. <laughs> Pikachu ran on a treadmill for an episode. And then it was OP. Right, it was the treadmill. That's what did it. Definitely. Wasn't the, the being struck by lightning or anything? Nah. So, I vote that until Ash gets back Heracross, we should boycott talking about Pokemon on the podcast. Uh, okay. So we're just doing Digimon now? <laughs> Could you imagine? We're just like, and this episode, Ash still didn't get Heracross back. So let's move on to Digimon. <laughs> Pokemon gets no points because Heracross is still MIA. <laughs> Hashtag, where's my Heracross? I think mean, Professor Oak's guilty as well. He suggested the Heracross being sent back. I mean, yeah, but it's up to Ash at the end of the day to send which Pokemon. Because Ash wasn't like, oh, I'll send my weakest Pokemon. He was like, oh, which one should I send? And Professor Oak's like, I haven't seen Heracross yet. Like, okay, cool, I'll send you Heracross. Who's on Ash's team at the moment? There's Pikachu, there's Chikorita, Cyndaquil, Tauros, and I don't know who the other two are. 
Uh, Squirtle and Bulbasaur. I oh, Squirtle and Bulbasaur. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It is Squirtle and Bulbasaur. Four starters, a Pikachu and a cow. <laughs> you're right. He has a whole team of starters and a cow. <laughs> One of these things is not like the others. <laughs> One of these things is just a cow. It's not a balanced team. <laughs> of course it's not. To be fair, though, if I was in the Pokemon world, I wouldn't have a balanced team either. I would just have a team of Pokemon I managed to catch or that I like. Wait, he has five Pokemon that he hasn't been able to evolve once, and one that can't evolve anyway. Uh, I love Cyndaquil's evolution. It's the best. The best. It doesn't happen until Gen 4. <laughs> Like, we already know Bulbasaur refuses to evolve, so that's fine. If Bulbasaur wants to stay a Bulbasaur, fine. That's not Ash's fault. But, like, Cyndaquil doesn't evolve till Gen 4. <laughs> and just into Koalaba. Ash's team is so bad. It is. It's super bad. And I think Chikorita only becomes Bayleaf, right? Chikorita never makes it to Meganium, right? I, I don't know. I think it does, but I'm not sure when. It could be much later. Jesus, Ash. Your team is so bad. <laughs> Why? Heracross was like the best one on that team. And Ash is just like, hey, I'm going to get this entirely untrained cow from back in Kanto. I love how he has the one good bug Pokemon and he's like, nah. <laughs> okay, he has one other dual typing. <laughs> That's it. To be fair, Bulbasaur is not very poisony. It's very grass based. It doesn't have a lot of poison moves or anything. And all he does is use Vine Whip to save people from falling. Oh my gosh, Ash's, Ash's Bayleaf never evolves. Wow. It's Bayleaf forever. <laughs> Ash, you make me sad. I mean, at least it got one evolution, but come on, man. Starters are like the easiest Pokemon to, lo to level up and evolve. <laughs> come on. There has to be some reason that... No, I don't think there is a reason. I think Ash is just bad. I th yeah, I think, yeah, he's just bad. Maybe Game Freak just wants everyone to get attached to the base levels, because that's the ones that they have to pick from. That could be it. Yeah, that's that's not a fair idea. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to see Bulbasaur on screen for as long as possible because you can pick a Bulbasaur. But yeah, but then it doesn't make sense why you would evolve it to one stage up and then not the last one. Like, you think you'd want, because you think you'd want to show the whole line. Like, oh, this is what a Chikorita is. It's, you know, Chikorita, Bayleaf, Meganium, Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. You know, you'd want to show all of it. And I guess technically they do show everything because every episode eventually shows every Pokemon that exists. But it's still kind of, I don't know, weird. I, I don't know. Anyway, anything else? One qu quick note. Uh, uh, James almost got scammed into buying a Magikarp again. Again. Almost. <laughs> I was so hoping that James would realize that it was the same guy, and he did. Yeah, it's so good. That was a good callback. And Team Rocket's con this episode was actually decent, if they'd left town straight afterwards. They, yeah, because they hung around, everyone was like, hey, my Pokeballs are empty! It's like, oh, you're idiots, now they're all just gonna chase you down. I did like the, the, uh, the blast-off switcheroo, too, that was pretty good. Where they were like, yeah, we replaced all the Pokeballs they got back with the, with the empty ones. Which is actually kind of cool, because everyone's probably thinking like, oh, they blasted off, everything's fine now. And really, it's like, no, they, they still have the, the correct Pokemon. Um, the only other things, Snubble is still following them. I always forget Snubble is a thing until Snubble is a thing again. Like, they weren't, they weren't important at all. <laughs> they were just there. We gotta, we gotta keep Snub Snubble. Stevie Snubble. It's Snubble. We can't have Pokemon Johto without Snubble. The whole show falls apart without that little pink dog. Yes, with the little bows. Also Psyduck. Psyduck was there as well. And all I kind of wish Psyduck got traded for something. That was so mean. Misty was like, oh, you dumb Psyduck. And then people were like, oh my gosh, the Psyduck. I want the Psyduck. I want the Psyduck. I want the Psyduck. And Misty's like, oh, uh, no, I'm not trading. Oh, hey, maybe you are good for something. Like... Wow, Misty, maybe you should train Psyduck so he's good and you can stop making fun of him all the time. <laughs> Psyduck is good. Psyduck is good. It's just inconsistent. It's a good duck. It's a good duck. The names are confusing, but it's a good duck. No, the names are backwards. <laughs> That's what I mean. They're completely backwards. It's like, what? That's probably intentional. I, I don't know. I, th I think it's funny that that happened. If it was an accident, that's pretty funny. It's like the whole Butterfree... And Venomoth thing, which is interesting. What's that? 
Uh, the idea that Butterfree and Venomoth actually got mixed up in their uh, evolution lines. They were supposed to be swapped because Venonat looks a lot more like Butterfree and Caterpie and Metapod look more like Venomoth. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I think I prefer it the way it is. Yeah, but it is interesting because when you look at Venonat, it's like, yeah, that looks a lot like Butterfree, actually. And, and even if they didn't, it still makes more sense than Weedle. Which, which is what? Caterpillar just do not turn into bees. <laughs> just becomes a giant wasp bee thing, which then Mega evolves to gain cannons. Yes, because that's what we needed. Mega Beedrill's awesome. I'm just going to look at Mega Beedrill so I can look at it again. Reminds me of Waspamon. It's a very Digimon design. Just the, the sharp lines and the pointy things. See, I feel like Mega and Legendary Pokemon are what I wish... Digimon was, because if they got that complicated and that was it, that'd be great. But Digimon jumps the deep end. It's like, I can't even tell what this is. What what even is this? What am I looking at? It's a rainbow of spikes and guns and death. Gundramon will forever be the one that makes me laugh the most. It's just a dragon made of guns. I've not seen Gundramon before. You haven't? Oh my god, it's wonderful. I thought Machine Dramon was best. No, Gundramon is, is the best. <laughs> it's all gun all the time. Its kneecaps have guns. <laughs> oh my god. Does it, does it have one single eye that is a gun on top of its head? <laughs> Probably. Its ears are guns. Its wings are guns. Its heels have guns. <laughs> its chest probably has guns. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think we can finish up Pokemon. <laughs> so, uh, was it filler? Technically, no, because Wobbuffet is gained and Licky Tongue is lost. But it's kind of a weird episode because it might as well be filler aside from that. Like, it doesn't really have a point other than Licky Tongue is gone and Wobbuffet is here now. <laughs> I mean, we've given episodes where Brock caught Pokemon the not filler stars before. So I, th- I think we should count it for Jesse as well, because I like Jesse more than Brock. I know but by Moncast rules it's not filler, but I mean like, in general, like, this episode doesn't really have a point to it. It's just kind of, like, a tongue is not there anymore and Wobbuffet is here now. Yeah, like, you can get it from a bullet point on the Wikipedia. Right, yeah. It's still technically not filler. Yeah, technically. It's because we gain the best the best Pokemon in Team Rocket. Yes, Wobbuffet. Wobbuffet! So much better than, like, Meowth. Who needs to talk when you can say Wobbuffet? Pokemon that aren't Wobbuffet? You know what I've always wondered? Can Pokemon say other Pokemon's names? I'm pretty certain they do actually, like, say each other's names in the Island of Giant Pokemon episodes. And they just say it like their own name still. But it translates. It's like when Pikachu's calling out for Charmander and stuff like that. It's just going, Pikachu! 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 I need to rewatch that episode because it's genuinely the best episode of Pokemon I've seen. They subtitled the Pokemon. It's so good. This episode, though, it was pretty solid. I liked it for the Wobbuffet and I disliked it for Ash getting rid of Heracross. In favor of a cow. I feel like Heracross must come back, though, right? Because I don't remember Taurus ever being a big thing in the anime. I hope. I remember Heracross being around a lot. Yeah, I hope Heracross comes back and that they don't leave it like five episodes till he uses him again. Just that I'm not left on edge like, has he got a cow or Heracross? (laughs) He has both. No, he can only have six. Apparently every time he wants to make a change, he has to enter negotiations with Professor Oak. (laughs) <laughs> to enter negotiations. But I guess he doesn't have the the PC boxes. He just sends them to Professor Oak, and he handles everything. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know if Ash does that because he has Professor Oak around, or if uh, well, no, everyone can't do that. You can't just bother the local Pokemon professor for for your Pokemon. He is the professor would never do anything. <laughs> that just makes me picture Professor Oak as like some mafia mob boss just hoarding all the Pokemon. <laughs> Maybe that's what the aides do. The aides just like are like, okay, we gotta swap everyone's Pokemon. Janet, quit sending me your Magikarp. This is the fifteenth time I've taken your Magikarp from you. Evolve the damn thing. <laughs> Put it in daycare. I don't care. <laughs> I think we should talk about Digimon as well now. <laughs> Let's talk about Ultimate Anti Hero, Anti Hero, Uncle Hero, whatever you want to go with. <laughs> 
So, and before we start, I just want to say that Aru Kenimon is a bath person, and therefore the most relatable villain of all time. Do you agree? Yes, but it's been a long time since I've taken a bath. Ooh, you stink. No, <laughs> I mean, my house doesn't have a bathtub, you dork. Wow, don't call me a dork. That hurts. You dang dork. I want your sass here, you dork. I'm having flashbacks to when I used to get bullied. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, Arukenimon's a spider, and Arukenimon gives us a brand new villain made from a hundred black control spiders, whatever they are. The best villain ever. The best. The absolute greatest. Like, seriously? Seriously? Sega called. They want their money back. You're just basically copying Shadow the Hedgehog here. <laughs> Not gonna lie. My exact notes end with, hey, walks in Shadow of the Hedgehog. <laughs> Just, that's what it is! It is just Shadow the Hedgehog, but as a Digimon. All he's missing is a, a gun. He just needs a gun to be edgier. <laughs> and then boom, you have it. Shadow the Hedgehog, right there. We need guns and demons, and then it's, yeah. And rock music. <laughs> also, is Black War Greymon racist or not? What? Like, War Greymon becomes black, is now evil. Is that racist? <laughs> I think it's more just in reference to the color and the fact that night and darkness is considered bad. Not really that- what? So we're taking the Black War Greymon isn't racist stance. Yes! <laughs> okay, I'm okay with that. Also, you can't be racist against- Which Digimon have- do Digimon have a race in this- wait. See, now I'm- hmm. Do Digimon have skin color? <laughs> well, they're so different looking. I doubt that they discriminate against each other. Or, well, humans would, but, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. You could argue that they discriminate against, like, virus Digimon, because everyone just outright says they're all evil, which isn't necessarily true. That just brings me back to, is it racist? <laughs> racist in human means, or in, like, a possible Digimon means? Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Okay, I don't think it's racist by human standards. Okay. In Digimon terms, though, do do they treat him differently just because he's black? So, well, like, well, he's kind of a weird case because he was literally just made by the villain. So they're not going to treat him well no matter what. So, no. But then you could argue, like, how do all the other black uh, Digimon get treated? I don't know. They don't show up that often, actually. You don't see Digimon society as a thing. All they get is... Digi-Destined and villains fighting. How do Digimon treat each other? Leave a comment with your with your, with your, your opinion, your theory on this. What's your theory? How Digimon racist towards each other or not? Who knows? I would guess probably because they have sentience and everything with sentience is kind of horrible at some capacity. Being a thinking, feeling creature is great and all, but that also opens you up to bad things like hate and... Judgment and discrimination. And this is a weird topic. It is. I don't think I'm qualified to talk about it. I mean, you're qualified to talk about it in Digimon sense, but if we're talking about a political, is this racist by human, then no, I don't think either of us are qualified to talk about that. No, if Black or Greyman was just straight up a black man, then it might be racist. Well, that'd be weird also. Or <laughs> Kenimon just makes a guy. It's just a guy. <laughs> this is a guy. He can bring meteors down on top of you. Well, to be fair, like, Aru Kenimon and Mummymon are for some reason masquerading as people, and I don't know why. <laughs> like, at first, when they didn't want them to know, like, who they were, like, if you wanted to hide, like, what Digimon you were so they can't, like, learn how you work or whatever, like, okay, fine. But they know what they are now. They know it's Mummymon and they know it's Arukenimon. So it doesn't matter anymore. What, what are they doing? That's a good point. I forgot that they were in human disguise and don't need to be. Yeah, there's no point now. Their enemies know what they are. Yeah, there's especially no point in the digital world. Is it just easier to animate? That'd be my guess. Is it though? Well, I guess with Mummymon it probably would be. But with Arukenimon it looks like it's about the same, like, detail. Well, I guess it's kind of different looking. Maybe. She has less legs as a human. But the anime and Kilomon and all of the evolutions and those are complicated. But they also have a digivolution for every single one. So they don't need to do quite as much um, to get them screen time. Hmm, I guess so. 
We have like six Digivolutions, if not more. It might be up to eight. I lost count. You can tell the only point of this episode was supposed to be reveal Black War Greymon because there's like a evolution for every single one of them. And it's like, why? <laughs> yeah, they have flashbacks as well near the start. It's like they're just sort of straining to fill the episode length. There's a good five minutes of Ken and Cody just pouting. Like, there's not a lot going on here. Could you imagine if it was actually just like silence and them on screen? pouting <laughs> just when it shows that scene of them sitting opposite each other on different rocks on different sides of the field it's just it holds there for 10 minutes <laughs> it's an episode of two halves first one is ken and cody aren't getting along and so yoli and davis try and get them to be friends and then the second half is black Crow comes along and wrecks everyone uh-huh that's the episode yeah and can i just say that both ken and cody are kind of the worst <laughs> Just talk to each other for crying out loud. Like, Cody is super stubborn, and Ken, like, at every turn is like, I can't help you guys because you don't want me there, and you you don't want... Like, your friends are dying! Stop acting like such a pitiful little... Ah! <laughs> like, fine, if you're upset, you don't want to talk to them as much because you feel like you're being ostracized, fine. But they're literally about to die, and you're like, I'm not going to come because you guys don't want me there. Like, screw you, Ken! <laughs> wow. Ken pissed you off. Just the worst. Your self-pity is not more important than your friends dying. Wow, two life lessons from Shisa in one episode. <laughs> yeah, I agree, though, that Ken is far worse than Cody. Yeah. Like, he's older, he should know better. He's supposed to be smarter as well, and he gets the messages like, Ken, please help us. He's just like, nah, I don't want to get in the way of your team dynamics. Yeah, it's like, what? Like, the, Also, that's a terrible way of phrasing it. N not even like, I can't right now, and just be like, I don't want to go because I, I don't want to. But to literally say, I don't want to mess up your team is just like the worst. Just the worst. Ken is the worst. <laughs> He's so bad. He's just like, I feel bad, so I'm gonna let you die. Yeah, have fun with all that death. If you die, then my feelings will go away. I'm secretly still the Emperor, you just didn't know that. Okay, Ken does have one good contribution in the episode. By Yildermon? No. Oh. He has one line, which made me think of Pokemon. Uh-huh. Where he says, I can't believe it, we're actually making progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that's basically, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> she's like, yes, Ken, that's how I feel whenever we reach a gym. <laughs> yeah, the first half's just like, get rid of a couple control spires and that's it. And Ken and Cody refuse to talk, but I do really like Yoli in this whole episode. Especially, she sort of takes charge, because Davis is messing it all up. I forgot that I wrote it down as relationship counselling for Ken and Cody. Basically. Yeah, and, and Armadillomon and, and Wormmon get along so great. Like, they're all happy and hanging out together, and Ken and Cody are like, No, no, we don't listen to our Digimon. We just want to fight and pout for five hours. And then they get mad at Davis and Yoli, just like, Why did you do this? You're wasting our energy. It's just immature. It's really, really, really dumb. It's just really dumb. Especially Ken. Ken is, that's unforgivable. Like, Ken, you're leaving your friends to die because you, you feel bad, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And, like, Cody's, we know that Cody's had doubts, like, for ages now about Ken joining the team. You're right, yeah. And it's clear he doesn't want Ken to be there. But Ken plus Davis makes the most powerful Digimon on your team. You need Ken. Yeah, sorry, but you're just going to have to deal with it, Cody. Pretty much. Also, you're, like, eight, so <laughs> I don't think you're in the position to make team decisions. Right, yeah. yeah. Quit pouting. Quit pouting, you guys. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> no. Oh. Get along anyway. Oh. There's another thing I wanted to point out that this episode reminded me of. What is Spirit Needle? It's a thing our Ukenimon can do. But it's not one of our Ukenimon's attacks. It's just a thing, I guess, that she can do. It's like, why? What, where does that even come from? Plot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, plot, but like, what? <laughs> what, is it not even on the wiki as an attack? No, it's not an attack that she has at all. It's on like the Digimon fandom wiki. 
plucks spirit needle, plucks strands of its human form's hair, and uses them to convert control spies into artificial Digimon. Using more strands of hair will create stronger Digimon, one for a champion, ten for an ultimate, and one hundred for a mega. That might just be more because it happens in O2, though. Probably. Unless, like, the actual reference book stuff. Because I think that's what Wikimon does. So Wikimon is like, nope, that doesn't exist. Like, all right. So they just made that up for that season, basically. Yeah. It's Arachnimon, uh, Wikimon. Cool. So basically, she just... She actually helps with cleaning up the control spires. Yeah, because she's turning them into Digimon. And if it's 100 for a Mega, why not then just use a 1,000? Like, it's just using a hair. It doesn't take energy from the looks of it. Yeah, that's true. Like, why not just, like, cut your hair short and just let it go? Like, <laughs> like you might as well just, like, trim, like, the ends of your hair and just, like, whoosh. Just, boom, infinite, infinite evil Digimon. What would you get? Would you just get a Poclamon if you did that? Like, if you just, if she just cut off all her hair, would she just get a Poclamon? It's like, here we go again. <laughs> or Armageddon. Oh, not Armageddon. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that would be a bad. That would not, yeah, that would not be good. Especially if it was all emo. I'm not gonna lie, I would love to see tortured emo Armageddon. <laughs> like, just, just see how that even works. Honestly. I do kind of like how Black Rock Grandma's introduction, though, is just, he's really powerful, he can kill everything, but he doesn't care. He's just gonna leave. Because he wants stronger opponents. It's that anime trope. Yeah. Back. You're not worthy to fight me. So I'm just gonna let you live. I'm just gonna leave. Getting Dragon Ball flashbacks. <laughs> uh, I mean, he is the ultimate life form. Gosh, he's literally Shadow the Hedgehog. It's so bad. Where's the red highlights in your hair? Like, come on. You gotta go full ham on this. <laughs> Honestly, the only thing better than Black Hawk Raymond was Yoli. Just slapping Ken. Yeah, thank you, Yoli, for doing the thing I was thinking. She's like, Ken, you're being a child. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Yoli is like... You guys are acting like 10, like you're 12 years old. Oh, you know what I mean. Because like, they're literally like 12 and 10. And <laughs> I've only got a few more things noted down. I don't know how they knew Black War Greymon's name, because he's just been made. But everyone's like, oh my god, it's Black War Greymon! <laughs> oh no! And the funniest moment for me was after they take down the control spire, the two of them, and then there's just Vmon and Hawkmon clapping. <laughs> Right, it was like clap, 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 clap. Yay! Like it's a like it's a golf game or something. They just clap. <laughs> it's the best applause. Just like the, the expressionless faces, just really add to it. Just like they literally do not care. That's one of the weirdest thing about Digimon, especially like the the main partner Digimon, is they have like those big like like aimless eyes. <laughs> It's like, hi, I am staring at everything right now. <laughs> you can't even tell what I'm looking at because I'm just staring with full eyes. <laughs> just, just gaze deep into the void. I convert your soul into energy. I eat it for breakfast. Nom nom. Nom 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 nom. Tasty digi soul. Is there anything else about this episode of Digimon? Not really. It's basically just Black War Greymon is here now. Prepare for angst. Prepare for the better half. <laughs> Oh, Adventure Zero 2. Perhaps? I don't even know. It's been so long since I've watched. I think it's around about now things are going to start going downhill for Digimon. Yeah, this is the straw that started to break the camel's back. <laughs> and it's remarkably black or grey mud shaped. Is it filler or not filler? It is not, it is not filler. filler. Yeah, yeah. We have a brand new villain, and he's an edgelord. <laughs> the edgiest edgelord. Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog wannabe. That would be a reveal. Just like last episode of the series, he takes off the armor and there's a hedgehog. <laughs> it just literally is Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, or Shadow just shows up and goes, I am your father. And he's like, no! <laughs> uh, I think as a whole, the episode was eh? Yeah, it was eh. It was ammo? <laughs> E for emo. E for emo, yeah. And it was very padded out. Not at all like this podcast. No, not at all. So, shall we do Mano a Mano? <laughs> now it's time for Mano a Mano, where we attempt to compare these episodes by arguing with each other over trivial things. All the trivial. All the trivial, who cares? But let's do it anyway. <laughs> so, first of all, 
Let's pick our monster of the week. Now, my vote is obviously for Wobba Fett because Wobba Fett is the best. Yeah, Wobba Fett is, is, is best. Best monster. I mean, his name is just Wob Buffet. 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 I think we've made our pitch before for the, the like, buffet chain. It's called Wob Buffet. Yes. We need a Wob Buffet cafe, please. We do. I want it so bad. I made uh, the Octo. The Octo one as Octo Pie Bakery. I should do Wa Buffet Buffet. <laughs> no, it's not Wa Buffet Buffet. It's just Wa Buffet. <laughs> Wa Buffet, and it's just a Wa Buffet with like a chef's hat on. <laughs> <gasps> yes, I need it. It'd be so good. I would so go to Wa Buffet. Wa Buffet, I would do. It sounds good. The waiters would all be Wa Buffet. Yes, everyone is a Wa Buffet with the trays balanced on the head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and neat little tuxedos on. Yes. Make it happen. Pokemon, Pokemon Company, you need to make Wobbuffet real. Even if it's a filler episode, I'm fine with that, but please. It could be real. We've not seen enough Pokemon to know. <laughs> I hope it is. My dream. My actual dream. <laughs> it's all I need in life. So we've agreed on that already. But who was worse, Ash or Davis? Uh, I would say Ash was worse. Because... Ash didn't do anything. He was too dumb to realize that Lickitung and Wobbuffet got switched despite seeing both of them with the other trainer. And Davis actually was trying to patch things up with Cody and Ken, so he was doing something productive. So, yeah, I'd, I'll say Davis is better and Ash is worse. Yeah, I agree as well. Ash is also a terrible trainer. That's one reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you also have the added points of scorn for trading Heracross out. Just why? Heracross is so much better. But cow, Phoebe, but cow. If they get stranded, they have food. Wow, that would be a dark episode. Wow, just the episode where they get stuck in the wilderness and have to eat Tauros. Oh, just everyone's crying as they're eating him. Oh, no. <laughs> Tauros. <laughs> if only I had Charizard, I could have just flown to the nearest Pokemon Center. Just like a really realistic, morbid version of Pokemon. <laughs> is a live action episode. <laughs> See, this is why you're supposed to have a Tropius, because Tropius just grows food. Remember to pack a Tropius, kids. Tropius is just a tree. Yeah, it's a banana tree. It's a banana tree brontosaurus palm leaf thing. <laughs> uh, I really hope that Tauros is gone next episode and that Heracross is back. Please, let it be. <laughs> Here's a new one. Who is our favorite character? I already know who my vote's for. Yeah, I I'm just going to say Wobbuffet. It's got to be Wobbuffet. <gasps> oh, no. My vote was for Yoli. Oh, really? Oh, for slapping Ken. <laughs> yeah, like, Yoli Yoli took charge this episode. Like, Davis was supposed to be the leader, but Yoli was the one behind the scenes pulling Davis' strings. And then when everything was going downhill, and they were all going to die, Yoli left to actually grab Ken, slap him across the face, and bring him back. Yeah, that's true. Yoli was like, I'm having none of this garbage today. You get your butt over here, and you fight that damn monster! <laughs> Yoli is my favorite human character. We've already got our favorite mons, but who was your favorite human? Yeah, Yoli is a good pick. She's really the only one that kind of did anything in both of these episodes. Team Rocket had an actual good plan for once. That's true. They had like an actual contraption that was actually kind of clever. Do you call a painted box with Meowth inside a contraption? Well... <laughs> <laughs> well, quote unquote contraption. It's not functional, but it exists. I suppose it is still a con. So I, I could give points to Team Rocket for having an actual plan that kind of worked. And they did, like, smartly, like, they knew that they were going to get blasted off, so they swapped the bags at the last second. You know, I'll, I'll give it to Team Rocket. They actually did pretty good this episode, as far as Team Rocket plans go. Okay, but are they better than Yoli? Probably not. But you already voted for your lease, so let's have some variety. Ah, okay, fine. Fair enough. I think Team Rocket did better than Arokanemon and Mummymon, at least. Arokanemon and Mummymon basically just created a monster, and the monster immediately was like, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> You're a bunch of weaklings. I mean, from Blackwell Grimm's perspective, they were just two people. Because <laughs> they were in disguise. True, yeah. Maybe that's why they were in disguise, so that Blackwell Greymon didn't know the truth. But wouldn't it be better to for him to know who created him? You think that might help make him a little more loyal to you? Because you literally birthed him? True. He does just abandon his parents. What's a parents? 
Wait, Mummy Mom didn't help. Mummy Mom drove the car. That was his contribution. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't really a team effort on the, the digi-villain side. No, I mean, Aru Kenimon's the only one that can do the magic spire thing, so... And then the magic spire thing ignored her. Mummy Mom's doing his best. He's doing his best. Really? I don't think anything went right for anyone in Digimon. <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> Pokemon was all hunky dory. Digimon, everything was just kind of like up in the air, a bit chaotic. Little bit, little bit. It's like no one really knows what they're supposed to be doing. It's almost like the writers are making it up as they go along. <laughs> Weird. Speaking of plots and storylines, which one did we think was better this time? It's got to be Digimon. Whoa. I feel like both the plots don't matter. It's literally Digimon's approach was we have to introduce Black World Raymond, so here you go. And Pokemon was we have to introduce Wobbuffet, so here you go. But the actual episode itself didn't really have a point. Like, eh, you're just kind of introducing this thing and this is the roundabout way you get to introducing it. But nothing interesting really happens. It's just like, oh, Blackboard Greymon's here now. Cool. And for Pokemon, it's like, oh, Wobbuffet's well, here now. Cool. <laughs> I suppose really they're just kind of on par. Yeah, I guess so. Neither of them was particularly good. And they both just introduce a new thing and don't have a point. All that Digimon would have to do to take the lead is have Cody and Ken reconcile the differences somehow. All Pokemon would have to do is have Goldenrod be next door. Right, instead of stopping in this town. Like, just go to Goldenrod! Yeah, they're both kind of just nothing episodes, which have a a new character thrown in, just to justify the episode existing. You're right, basically, yeah. Yeah, It's kind of a bum week, then. A little bit, yeah. That sucks. Both these episodes are pointless, but count as not filler. Yep, because new characters. Ah. Who needs morals of the story anyway? Well, I guess the last thing to decide then is which one we preferred to, to give the point to them. And I personally enjoyed Pokemon a lot more. It was much more fun. Yeah, I would say Pokemon too. Like there was actually like lots of variety in what was going on. Whereas Digimon was just, we're pouting, we're pouting, we're pouting. Black where Greymon is here, we're dying. We're dying. <laughs> We're dying. Ken. Yoli slaps Ken. We're still dying. And come back next episode to find out if we actually died or not. <laughs> Pretty much. Just, yeah. They got wrecked in Digimon. That was the episode. At least Pokemon. Wobbuffet was fun. And like, Jesse started off hating Wobbuffet and was like, ah, oh, they actually tried and were, were cool for a second. <laughs> that never happens to us. I just like that Wobbuffet was initiated into the team. Yes, like you're one of us now. Really, I just like Wobbuffet more than Black War Greymon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of what it boils down to, isn't it? <laughs> and that does make the score 16-14 to Pokemon. Aww. I'm not biased. Aww. <laughs> it's not that I'm not biased. Like, they could both be good and be like, you know, it could be close. You know, it could be like, you know, 15 to 16 or, you know, whatever. It could be close, but no, it's just Digimon's getting getting wrecked. <laughs> Digimon was just kind of bland and just wasn't that fun to watch. There wasn't a- enough, like, when Digimon is bad, Pokemon wins through the sheer fact that it's funnier. Because Digimon tries to be serious and it's not good enough to do that. So then it's just like, oh, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, it just gets boring. Oh, well. Shall we wrap things up then? Sure. Sure, let's do it. Next time, we'll be discussing the 31st episodes, The Firing Squad. Oh, sorry, that's got an exclamation mark. The Firing Squad! There we go. And for Digimon, it's Opposites Attract. Uh, If you want to talk about today's episodes, you can reach us on Twitter and in the Moncast Discord. And you can support the show via Patreon to gain access to the Moncast Uncut uh, for as low as just $2 a month. Uh, We do have a couple new patrons. We have Chisai236. Hello! (laughs) That's you! What a coincidence! That's me, everyone! That's me! And we also have Nicholas! Yay! Yay! Thank you, both of you, for pledging. It means a lot, because I literally cannot afford to pay the hosting fees <laughs> without you. Of course, a big thank you to Cheesei for joining me as well. Where can the people find you? Google Cheesei236, that's where you can find me. Also, Moncast Discord. I forgot about that one. Yeah, so all the links are in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, bye-bye. 
Bye. 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 Don't forget to sleep. That was cheese size number one life lesson today. Learn from my mistakes, kid. Go to bed. Can you see all of me? <laughs> uh, we haven't gotten to Digisoul yet. No, that's the next season. Yeah. I think. No, so one after. We have Tamers first. Wait, was it Save Us? Or Data Squad, if you want to call it. Yeah, but that's after Tamers. So we have two more. Two more, yeah. Because there's Frontier. That exists. Oh, yeah, and Frontier. <laughs> 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 oh right he's totally forgot about protein <laughs> oh no uh, do you not like trains <laughs> i actually really like see i have a lot to say about frontier because i like frontier but i hate what they did with it i love the ideas <laughs> like if someone came up to me and went i have an idea for a story with all of this stuff in it, i'd be like that sounds really cool and then they gave me that season i'd be like wow this is this is the worst <laughs> This is the literal <laughs> worst. <laughs> I hate everything now. <laughs> well, we have that to look forward yeah, to. Yeah, I have a lot to say about Frontier. <laughs> I have opinions about Frontier. <laughs> uh.